Once upon a time called right now, there were a whole bunch of guys and they were all like marching, right? And you got this line of marching, ching, 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 and they're coming in here at an angle. And I'm gonna say that this is the ray that represents their incoming motion. They're going that way. And I can define an angle, <clears throat> excuse me, away from normal. And I will call that theta one. The beautiful about, thing about this is that I can change the direction of this arrow and I'm gonna get exactly the same circumstance. It doesn't matter whether they're coming from this way and getting bent towards the normal or coming from that way and getting bent away from the normal. So let's see what happens. First of all, we say that the guys who reach this slow region where they can't travel as fast have to slow down and so they won't make it as far. And I wanna investigate, well, let me draw this other, uh, they're bending, right? And they have to go that direction as a result and I can call this angle here theta 2. That's the angle away from normal on the other side. Let me get you some more dotted lines. And now I want to do a little bit of trigonometry, but let me first define some amount of time. This is, this is going to be the normal to that so there, we've got the wave front. This is the ray and this is the wave front that corresponds to it. And here's another one. Here's another wave front. And I want to say that this distance between these two particular wave fronts, it, I mean, it could be a wavelength. It could be many wavelengths. I don't really care. I'm just going to say that the, uh, the distance the wave goes in that time is the velocity of the wave. So I'm going to call it V1 here. So 1 is up there and 2 is down there. V1 times the amount of time that it's taken taken to go that far. But the frustrating thing is that the guys in this slow region, you can think of it as a swamp or whatever you want to do, have not been able to go nearly as far. And so we say that their normal looks something like this, mm -hmm, because they bent this direction. And I'm interested in how far they went during the same amount of time. It looks like they only went this far. You see that? This line has to be parallel to that line. It has to be normal to that line right there. And I'm gonna come out here like this maybe and investigate how far they've gone. As soon as I get to a normal, I can say that this is the time, this is the distance that these guys at this part of the wave have gone, now this is a little bit weird, but I guess I'm gonna to have to draw myself a little line um, Oh, right, this is the normal, so that's how far those guys have gone during the same amount of time. Now, this must be, therefore, this must be V2 times delta T. Do you see how this triangle is has a, a leg at V2 delta T, and this triangle has a leg at V1 delta T? During the same amount of time, whereas this guy would have gone this far had he been out in the fast region, because he's in the slow region, he's only gone that far because he's in a swampy slow region. Now it's time to make ourselves a little bit of angles. This is pretty fun. This is theta two right here, but the magical thing about it is that this is also theta two right there. You prove that to yourself, check it out. This is also theta two. And while this is theta one, turns out that this also has to be theta one. Oh, interesting. You're saying something about triangles. You're saying like this is theta two. This is the complement of theta two. We can make a dotted line down here and make all kinds of things. Oh my goodness. Geometry is so beautiful. But here's my point. If this is a right angle and this is a right angle, of course it is because those are right angles also, then I can make the statement that the sine of theta one, well, sine of theta one, here's theta one, and it's in a triangle, so I'm gonna say that it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, that's this sucker right here, VI times delta T, VI times delta T divided by the hypotenuse. Well, the sine of theta one, oh shoot. Okay, and this is the sine of theta two. It's going to be V, no, I didn't mean to say VI, I mean to say V1. V1, the speed on side one times delta T, and this side's gonna be the speed of side two times delta T, and I have to divide it by the hypotenuse. Now check this out. I could solve this for hypotenuse, or I could solve it for one over hypotenuse. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I, you know that one over hypotenuse has to be one over hypotenuse, because look, this is the hypotenuse of both of them. It's the same length. So I can make the conclusion, check it out, I'm gonna say, 
that one of our hypotenuse on the top equation says sine of theta one divided by vi delta t is equal to the one of our hypotenuse on the other side, which is sine of theta two divided by v two times delta t. And we can immediately cross out the delta t's. Who needed them anyway? And then, well, I have to do something cool right now. I'm going to define something called an index of refraction. And it tells me how refractive this area is right here. So here we go. I define index of refraction. Well, I could write it like this. The index of refraction is, wait a second, C is not the index of refraction. C is the speed of light. The speed of light is the index of refraction times the speed of light in the material. Or, Mm -hmm. Or I could say that the index of refraction is defined to be the speed of light divided by the speed of light in the material. Now you know that the fastest light goes is when it doesn't have a material to go through, right? So you know that this index of refraction, what are we gonna say? N is, uh, what's the smallest that N can possibly be? It's going to be greater than or equal to one, and it could be all the way up to infinity. Yeah, I mean, you can get objects that have infinity, whoa. If this is infinite, that means that light would stop in the material. And five, eh, maybe 10 years ago, you couldn't have a material that did that. But I'm thinking about Bose-Einstein condensates right now. You know that I am. And those suckers stop light. Wow, if light has a velocity of zero in that material, then the index of refraction of the material is in fact infinite. And it's very easy to make an index of refraction material of one or very close to it. If you just go through a vacuum, then light will be going at light speed in a vacuum by definition, and so that you're cool. Now I'm going to plug this into right here. If I rearrange this equation one final time and I say the velocity of light is equal to the speed of light divided by the index of refraction, I could then plug it into this equation and this equation, and I hope to find something that might be useful. I find that sine of theta one divided by, wait for it, this has gotta be C over N one equals sine of theta two divided by C over N two, because that's what V two is, C over N two. The speed of light in a vacuum is the speed of light in a vacuum. So if I simplify all of this, I get my C's canceled out. See, there's a C here and there's a C there, and I get N one. Now this is in the denominator of the denominator, so it's N one times sine of theta one is N two times sine of theta two. This is how, whoa, sorry about that dot there. This is how you determine the angle of and, well, it's the angle of incidence compared to the angle of refraction. And these are angles measured away from the normal. That's how we defined it right there. And this statement right here is called Snell's Law. Snell's Law. And you're gonna be using it all the time to find out how much light bends when it enters a region of slower travel. Also, it how, it's how much it bends away from the normal when it enters a region of faster travel. Get that straight. Get that straight. Entering a slower region, it bends towards the normal. That makes sense with the truck driving, right? Sticky wheels, etc. And then leaving a region of slow and entering a region of fast, it's able to bend away from the normal because this right tire is what's gonna hit first. It feels artificial. It feels really weird. But check my math, check my pictures, see if you can do geometry on your own. Good luck. I hope it makes sense after a while.